Hello and welcome to this edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. Let's have a quick look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. I, Frankie, pledge to build a band of brothers. I, Michael, a pledge to define myself by my character. I, Gesser, pledge to use my strength for good. My name is Ethan, and I pledge to nurture my fields. I am Aubrey, and I pledge to make the world a better place. My name is Salatiel Shinedima, the Executive Director of Women's Action for Development, and I pledge to mentor the next generation. Tonight in the studio we are joined by uh, Paulus Mbangu, he is the newly elected councillor of Rundu rural, uh, rural constituency in the Kavango East region and uh, of course he, is, he won that election as an independent candidate and uh, we called him to the studio to help us understand how he pulled off that miracle. Uh, councillor, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how did you do it? Yeah, no, uh, actually it was... Uh, it was challenging a little bit, but then our message was very much clear yeah. from the onset. Uh, because in the first place, let me just take you through. The people of Rundu Rural yeah. have all these years voted for support party. Yeah. So they sacrificed for their life, they struggled for the party in order for Namibia to become independent. Yes. Now the expectation was that in a free and independent Namibia, they expected for them to have their dignity, for their livelihood to be improved. Mm -hmm. But that did not happen. Yeah. So the party turned a deep ear on them and filtered a candidate who was not even interested in serving the interests of the community, but yeah. he was only there for his personal you know, ambitions and so on. So they asked me to come in and yeah. I came to their rescue. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say here is that um, the people of Rundu Rural, yeah. which Rundu Rural currently at the moment is the second poorest constituency in the whole, in the entire country. Uh -huh. There are about 121 constituencies in the country. So Kapako in Kavango West is the poorest, and Rundu Rural is the second poorest. So development has been sluggish, mm -hmm. yes, for all, for all these years. Yeah, and uh, people are frustrated. So mm -hmm. I came in to translate their frustration into meaning, mm -hmm. yeah in order to, to, trans, to, to, to make their life easier, yeah. to, to serve them as their, as their servant, yeah. Yeah, to improve their livelihood. Indeed. Which is very interesting, Councillor, because when you're saying the constituency, the constituency is the second poorest in the country, that's new information I didn't know. Yes. Uh, what, what does it mean in real terms? What's happening on the ground? What, what is it that is lacking uh, on the ground? No, there are a lot of things. The, the development, uh, there's no development going on there. Mm -hmm. the, the constituency was neglected. I'll give you an example of one village which is called Mazana. Now, Mazana village, no opposition parties ever managed to hold a meeting, even a single meeting at that yeah. village. And that's my home village. Uh -huh. Yeah, and go to Mazana today, there's nothing there, no electricity. Yeah, people are still drinking from water from, from the river. Mm. Only some few people who have managed, with those resources, who have managed to, to put taps in their houses, but yeah. majority of the people are still drinking from the river. I'm quite sure that even if I will give you water from the river, I won't be able to drink that it. Never. Yes, and it's the same with the ministers, it's the same yeah. with the all government officials. So why is it fashionable 
for them to find it normal for the people of Kavango to drink from the river. Yeah. yeah. That's what we've been telling them during the campaign. Mm -hmm. That in my five years' time, we'll make sure that no person in Rondwa will be able to drink contaminated water from the river. Yeah. Because it's not health. Mm -hmm. And it's not right. And those are basic needs. Those are basic human rights. They, mm -hmm. they need it. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so apart from the provision of water, which is, of course, a very important uh, basic amenity, what, are, what were the other campaign promises you've made to the people? So development is sluggish, so there's high unemployment rate. So we are, we, in, our, in our master, in the, in, the, in the manifesto, we have a master plan. Mm -hmm. we, we intend to initiate a lot of projects in the Rundrua so that we can be able to provide employment to the, to the youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are also planning also to have an incubation centers yeah. in which we need to educate our youth, you know, to understand the values and norms of society and also the world around them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in order to prepare them to become a responsible citizen. Yes, yes. Yeah, we are trying also to come up with a green scheme in Rundu world. So yeah. we'll be looking at different doors, be it NGO, be it government, so that at least they should be something. Mm -hmm. We'll also try to get experts mm -hmm. to come and train our farmers so that they can be able to start farming you know in a, in a modern way yeah yeah, yeah. That, that is to ensure that there's food security in the in the in the rural constituency you see when i had a meeting with the uh, ministry the official from the minister of agriculture yeah. so i was i was um, a bit disappointed that there's no extension office in the rural yeah yeah so people in the rural have to rely on other constituencies to get information on agriculture which is quite unacceptable mm -hmm. so i told them that we need one in yes. the in the constituency we even need a district hospital in the rural there's no district hospital mm -hmm. we don't expect them to travel to rural and get help from rural they need to be hospital it's about bringing service closer to the people and that yeah. was one of my promise yeah. in my in my manifesto we don't have a police a, 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 a mobile substation in the, in the whole constituency it's mm -hmm. quite unacceptable mm -hmm. yes we'll be advocating for that and also be advocating for a lot of things the road also is, a, is another challenge there's mm -hmm. a villages we have villages like gongwa we have villages like uh, mbora we have a, it's a sand pavement there and we need we need to upgrade those roads into into gravel road mm -hmm. yeah electricity is a challenge water is a challenge you even find people also in the in the constituency who don't even have documents. Yes. Yes. And identity the, document. Identity document. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because they cannot travel to to go to Rundu. It's, it's, it's a bit far. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to bring service closer to the people. I will engage the Minister of Home Affairs that will be able also to help our our people to access those documents. Indeed. Yes. Now, councillor, the the challenge with councillors. Yes. In the way our our laws and our institutions of councillorship are, are structured um, is that um, as much as you have these very beautiful ambitions, mm. there, there are many structural obstacles, yes. um, such as you not having a budget for your office uh, and, and stuff like that. Um, how do you intend to navigate your way around those, those stumbling blocks? You see, at the time when we were in the the leadership of the youth support party youth league we've been advocating for every constituency to have a what a constituency development fund yeah yeah and uh, this currently there's a bill and uh, I'm, I'm it's fortunate that i'm in the national council will push for that bill mm. yeah to be you know to to go through so that at least every constituency should have its own fund yes, yes. yeah yeah i think that that's the only best way indeed uh, yeah the only best option that we can be able to to make councillor to be more effective yeah yes yeah. Do you fear, uh, Councillor Bangu, that uh, because you have stood against what used to be your, your party, SWAPO, which is the ruling party of the country, mm. uh, do you fear sometimes uh, of the possibility to be sabotaged that uh, if you shine, you may be rewarded again and therefore uh, there could be some people within the party, even if it's not the top leadership, mm. saying, look, we have to sabotage this man so that it doesn't shine. Do, 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 you, do you fear that possibility? Ah, no, no, no. I, I don't fear. You know, so we, you see, even during the campaign, there were a lot of supportage. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and, and we emerged victorious. So I'm also expecting the, the same. It might happen, but mm. it's not a big issue. You see, Article 95 of the Arabian Constitution is quite very clear. That the government has a responsibility to ensure the welfare of all Namibian citizens, and that includes the citizens of, of Rundura. So yes. we'll hold every government officer accountable. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If they deny our people service, we'll hold them accountable. There are legal instruments in place. Yes. We can even take them to court. We can even take a minister to court for that matter. No, we'll never allow any unnecessary, any unnecessary or deliberate sabotage. No, we'll not allow it. Indeed. And have no fear at all. Indeed. What were the fundamental reasons why you left SWAPO? Um, you were part of the SWAPO Youth League uh, yes. ex uh, National Executive, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And um, that whole team yes. of leaders, or the majority of them, at some stage just got sort of flushed out of the system uh, when there was a change of leadership in the party. Mm. I, I, is that what partially contributed to you thinking that uh, there isn't space for you in the party to really do what you want to do for the people? Uh, you see, there is a leadership crisis in the party and, uh, in, and it, it, it's quite very clear to, to, to all, the, everyone can even see it. Mm. Yeah, um, let's talk about people like maybe, for example, Job, Swat, we were together with them in the, in the leadership of the Youth League. So you can see that they left the party because of those, those frustration that's in the party. They, is, uh, they, they, they don't allow the youth to express themselves freely within the party. So the, yeah, and uh, for me, I, I resigned from the party on the 12th of October. Yeah. That's a day, that was on a Sunday, and the next day I have to register mm. as an independent candidate. So I resigned because of the constitutional uh, resolution, the, con the resolution of the Congress. Yes. Apparently they say that party members should not contest as an independent candidate. They had no option. Mm -hmm. And the candidate that was imposed on the constituency is, uh, we know that uh, it, not serve, it not serve the people well, so they, it was not... I could not stand it at mm -hmm. all. So I resigned in order for me to stand as an independent candidate. There was no other option for me. Yes, I yes. have to take that road. And the result, the result uh, in the Rundu well can, can attest to the fact that I was right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So essentially it means that um, if uh, the constitution of the party allowed in any way for independent candidates, you, you would have been a super member still by Yes, now. I could still have been a super member, yes. Mm -hmm. I only resigned because of there was no other option for me. And yeah. I have to take that road. Indeed. And I don't regret what I did, so it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. How would you juggle, uh, Councillor, you are now in the National Council, yes. um, as a member there, uh, how would you juggle between uh, your, your parliamentary duties and fulfilling your, your, your mandate in, in back, back home? Yeah, no, um, you see, I'm the only independent candidate in the National Council, so yeah. this, is, this is still a, a, a new thing. Uh, so. yeah. Yeah, but um, I will consult my colleague and I will consult the constituency on how best can I remain relevant and productive in both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be it in the National Council, be it uh, in the constituency. The good thing about about uh, the history that the rural, rural, the rural people made is that, uh, you see, they mandated, they mandated me to come and speak on their behalf. Yes. I'm the only person in the National Council who will not speak on behalf of the party, but on behalf of the people. Yes. So... What that means is that I'll bring fresh air mm -hmm. to the National Council. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring fragrance and add to the notion of uh, representative democracy in Namibia. Yes. Yes. So you are directly representing your people and not any organization? Not any other organization, yes. Yeah. And uh, so I'm a, I will not be limited in any way. I am not under any party protocol, so yeah. I'll speak freely. Yeah. And I will advocate for social justice for our people. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have a strong team also in, in Rundu Rural. Yeah. While I'm here, my team, I'll just, I will assemble a very strong CDC. Yeah. So I will delegate the powers to them. They yeah. can still have meetings on my behalf, yeah. engage the communities. I don't think that's a challenge. Actually, it's a, it's a good, good opportunity for me mm -hmm. so that um, when, when bills are passed, are brought into the, in the National Council, I'll be able to review them, putting the interests of, the, of, of our people mm -hmm. yeah, at first. So I think, I think it's a good opportunity. I don't think that uh, it will affect me a lot as long as I have a strong team yeah. in place. Yes, indeed. Councillor, the, of course, maybe the, another opportunity, of course, is that uh, I think there are only sessions of parliament. Yes. So when during the off season, if you like, uh, then yes. you, are, you are back in the constituency. I hope that also serves you better. Yes. Um, I want to engage you on something, uh, Councillor. So th they say, a lot of views that come from the two Kabango regions, mm. including your, Kab your Kabango East region, yes. about what is perceived to be the exclusion of people from the two regions from, yes. uh, from government uh, yes. positions and, and whatnot. Yes. And last week when President Hage Genkop announced mm. the ambassadors, mm. 
the new ambassadors, um, there was again that wave of discontent yes. from the region, even from Swapo members yes. in the region saying, you know, we are just voting cows yes. and whatnot. I, is that, as a man on the ground, is how serious are those views? No, they are very serious. Mm. Uh, during the town hall meeting, I even I raised the same with the, with the president. I stood up there in the town hall meeting, I told the president the same about the exclusion of the Kavango. Um, in the past years, we even came to State House and we, we, we presented our issues to the late, uh, late Vice President Nick, Dr. Nicky Yambo, may his soul rest in peace. Mm. We told them about the issue of the exclusion. You see, let me help you to understand the situation of Kavango. Yeah. In 1991, there was a census, there was a census, and uh, there's a census report for that year. Mm. Now, in that census report for 1991, the results are quite very clear that Kavango by then was a poorest region. Mm. Then another census was conducted 10 years after in, 2000 and, in 2001. Mm. The result again is the same, that Kavango was the poorest region. Mm -hmm. Then another census was conducted again in 2011, and the result is still the same. Mm. So there will be another census next year. Then there was a, the income and expenditure survey in 1993-1994. The result of that income and expenditure survey, which was conducted by the National Planning Commission, the statistical result indicate that Kavango is the poorest region. Mm. Then there was another income and expenditure survey in 2003-2004. The result was still the same. There was agricultural survey in, 20, in 2005, agricultural survey in 2015. There is an NDP report that attests to the fact that the two regions, that Kavango region is the poorest. So what does that tell us is that the government has been neglecting the two regions. Mm. Because what is the use of conducting survey at the end of the day with statistical data? You don't even act, you don't even budget based on the statistical data. Mm. So, so, so what's the use? Mm. So if you can look at the allocation of budget, Kavango, Kavango is even receiving, you know, one of the least budget. Mm. At the time when we engaged the, the late vice president, by then, Kavango West was allocated a budget of 300 million and Kavango, Kavango East 400 million, while other regions Erongo by that time was allocated 1.1 billion. Karas was also in more than 1 billion. And we're asking these same questions. We have statistics in the offices that these are the two poorest regions. Yeah. But then the budget allocation does not even address. So what, what's the use of conducting this, this survey? Mm -hmm. We can see that there was a serious neglect, uh, negligence from the part of the central government for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. And even today, I think the situation for Kavango is still the same. Mm -hmm. There will be census next year. I'm quite sure that even the report for next year will still be the same again. If you look even, for example, in Kavango West, yeah. we don't have a government building in Kavango West, except schools mm -hmm. and the police station. Yeah. Nothing. Even the Minister of Education, they are renting. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are renting. Everywhere they are. Even the governor in Kavango West, yeah. she's renting. There is no government offices there. Yeah. Yeah. And now when people speak out about these things, then we have been accused of tribalism, regionalism. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that is exactly why, yeah. why I have this question for you, Councillor. Yes. Uh, that if, if that is the situation on the ground, yes. because that is scientific proof yes. 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 that indeed the regions, the two regions are in trouble in terms of not being prioritized for development. Yes. Now, why isn't that more of the, the rhetoric then, from the, the, the narrative from the, the, from the two regions to say, um, why, why are we preoccupying ourselves with things like ambassadors? What, what, what does Sinimbo being ambassador to India do mm. to, to the two regions. Why don't the people in Kavango say, look, on the basis of voting, on the basis of uh, research that done, we are the poorest and therefore we demand these things. Why isn't that so, sort of the priority in terms of your discontent instead mm. of asking, oh, we only have two ministers in cabinet and whatnot. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. no, the issue of representation also plays a role. Yeah. You see, democracy is all about number. Yes. And, and it's, it's a fact that uh, Kavango people are the second largest ethnic group in Namibia after the Bambos. Mm. What does that mean is that we're supposed to, we, at the moment now we are nowhere in the configuration of power structures. We're supposed, uh, we, we're supposed to be, we have a lot of Kavangos also as ministers. Now mm. currently we only have one minister. Mm. And that's what an unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, if I can take you back in 1989 election, Swapo only won in, in the two homeland. That was in Evamboland and Kavango, as well as Commerce here. Now what yeah. does that mean is that if Swapo could not win in Kavango, Semi Nyoma could become the president of the country because the, the PVA voter could not have allowed Semi Nyoma to be the president because he's, he was only voted by only one ethnic group. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, Semi Nyoma might probably have, could have went back in Angola again. 
<laughs> the reason, the, the, the significance of the Kabango vote of 1989 mm. should not be, you know, underestimated. Yeah. It is that Kabango vote that made Sam Limad be the president of this country. Mm. Because everywhere it was, it was a DDA yes. that won. Yeah. Yeah. But our leaders have forgotten that. At times they even tell us they, they googled the word word, you know, <laughs> they googling, you know, wrong result and so on. It's yeah. quite unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. You see, regions that are developing now are the regions that have people who are who have been in a position of powers. Because yeah. one, once in a position of power, you can be able to influence. Yes. Yeah. Currently now we only have Mutorwa. And Mutorwa is one of the most competent ministers and is uh, everyone knows in Namibia. Yes. And uh, he's competent. But he's only alone there. Yeah. That's why we are saying that there must be, there must be priority. There must be priority on development, but also, as well as the presentation, because yeah. that also plays a key role. Yeah. You can write your letter there, but those people in decision making, yeah. they are the ones who have the powers to, to influence where resources should be allocated and so on. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so how sh how should it be really? Um, um, I am thinking about where I come from. Yes. Uh, uh, we are Mbajas from Wakalongo. Yes. <laughs> We've never had anyone. For 30 years, at yes. least you guys have had ministers yes. and whatnot. So are you, are you saying that uh, if the Mbajas, as a sub-tribe of the Vambos, yes. had at any stage might be a permanent secretary or a minister, deputy yes. minister, whatever, that somehow the possibility is there that uh, Okalongo would have been uh, slightly better than it is today? Okay. Um, uh, I'm not quite, I will not comment much on the issue of Kalongo because I don't understand the current situation now there yes. in, the, in the Kalongo. I might be, you know, I might, I might so, have. Uh, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a general uh, yeah. observation. Yeah. But, well, what, but what, yeah. I, what I can only tell you is that yeah. in 1991, yeah. the current president, like again, stood up in parliament. There was a parliamentary debate, and to be exact, it was 7, 7 June 1991. He stood up and then he said that there's a need for, for balancing the structure of public service. Mm. I remember. I think even, I think it's a few months back, was also saying the same thing to the, the chief of defense, that please balance your structure. Yeah. Because it's a constitutional thing. Yes. yes. So everyone should be able to enjoy from the cake of this country. Yeah. yeah. These things of satellizing and excluding, marginalizing others, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a ticking bomb. Yeah. 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 Which, which might explode at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always important that uh, as leaders, we should treat everyone as equal. We just celebrated the Human Rights Day on the 10th of December. What does that mean is that we are, we sh we are equal. Yeah. We are equal, we are born equal, and we are equal, and should be treated also equal. Yeah. Yeah, yes. that's, that's a, it's a basic thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constitutional right of everyone. Indeed. Yes. Now, now Councillor, I, I, I need to understand this thing. So the two Kavango regions continue to actually carry SWAPO. Yes. Uh, in terms of votes. Yes. Uh, in the case of the recent uh, regional and local authority elections, um, Kavango West in particular, yes, uh, there were uncontested constituencies there yeah. because other parties did not even fill candidates mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The entire um, Kurenkuru local authority mm -hmm. uh, council is swap, swap 100%. Yes. I I'm trying to understand this sense of loyalty to the party where it comes from. If, 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 if the region, con the, the two regions continue to be at the bottom of the development charts, mm. why do you think Kavango people continue to vote for Swabo? I think uh, they're just loyal to the party. Yeah. But, but it's about time that the leadership must realize that uh, this party might change at any, any given time. Mm. The result in Rundu Rural should send, should send a stand warning mm. to the leadership that anything can change. You see, even on the treatment of, uh, of our leaders in Kavango, for example, do, do you know that the state has never given a state funeral to any person in Kavango? Uh -huh. Yes, never, it never happened before. Uh, in, 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 in 2015, I wrote an article in the newspaper, Namibia and was also in the Sun, uh, titled Hypocrisy of Hero, Heroism in State Funeral, on which I, I was so disappointed that the late uh, Hompa Stendupasi was not, uh, was not given a state funeral. Mm. And uh, his contribution to the Barisa struggle is known even by the, by the party leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a lot of people that, that uh, former, you know, plain veterans. We have, uh, there are many. Mm. Yeah, there are many. And uh, no one has afforded a state funeral. Mm -hmm. Not even to mention about Harold's funeral. Yeah. And all those things point to only one fact. That is marginalization of our people in the region. Okay. And uh, I, I think our people are awake now.
Mm -hmm. They work, you know, on the ground there, when you're on the ground, you can hear the views of the people. Uh, they are disappointed, they are now angry, they are starting now to speak up, mm -hmm. yes, to, to voice themselves out. And they should, they should not be taken for granted. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The final question to you then, Councillor, is um, Muzokuma, you used to be sort of the face of uh, the organization that is called uh, Muzokuma, yes. which spoke a lot to what you're saying now. Yes. Uh, it advocated for better lives for people in the region. Uh, it spoke out actually when a lot of people feared the, the, the kind of views that a lot of people were, were scared to air. Muzokuma yes. used to come in and fill that gap. Yes. What, what, what is your involvement in the organization and what is its future now that you've been uh, elected councillor and also yes. member of parliament? No, you are right because Muzokuma, the purpose of Muzokuma was to advocate for social justice. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the quality of our people. Justice, justice I pointed out about uh, the lack of respect that was shown to our people, even our leaders. The, the late uh, uh, Hon Pashiyambe of Diriko also was not afforded anything, not even a state funeral, not even an uh, official funeral. Mm. The late Matumboli baby of the Sambi also is the same. So, yeah, you know, I was a chairperson of Muzokume from 2016 to 2019. In terms of our constitution, the chairperson should only serve three years. Yeah. That is to avoid turning the, con the organization to a personality card. Mm -hmm. So, my term ended in 2019. And then, my vice chairperson Kamaoko took over. Yeah, but because of commitment, he did not pay much attention to the organization, so he was replaced again this year. This is, Muzokume now is under the new, the new, new management, yeah, new leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I'm very proud and honored that uh, Muzokume, Muzokume has awakened mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 the people of Kavango. And now they are, uh, they are speaking out now mm -hmm. without fear. Yeah, that was one of the that was one of, one of the purpose, and uh, mm -hmm. of course there is still work a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's a good thing. Yes. It's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing to, to to give a platform to the people so that they can hear their, hear their concern, raise their issues openly without any, without without any fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I can only say is that we'll continue giving support to the leadership of Muzokumwe. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a. Because it's not a it's not a political party. They've got not, nothing to do with politics. In yeah. Muzokume, you find people of different parties, SWAPO members, APP, whatever party, mm -hmm. just an association to advocate for social justice for our people. It's a good thing for our country. Indeed. Yes. Councillor Mbango, thank you very much for coming. Okay. I thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, Councillor Paulus Mbango. He is uh, the newly elected independent councillor of uh, uh, Rundu Rural Constituency and also recently elected to the National Council speaking to us about his new mandate and how he sees the future. Thank you for watching.